inches long. Uh, so for this those that are be... listening, I've got Jacob here. He just pulled out a very yes. unique, long, concreted bank here. <laughs> Welcome to the United States Fingerboarding League Fingerboard Podcast. I'm your host, Wine Cunningham, and I'm excited to be chatting with Jacob Thompson of Snuggle Pub. Oh, thank you for having me on here. For you guys that are not aware, Jacob here, he is also known as Snuggle underscore Pup underscore FB on Instagram. And he makes uh, breaks some pretty fire ledges and stuff with some concretes. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit later, but... First off, let's uh let's talk about you, Jacob. Like, let's uh talk about you know what's your fingerboard background. What do you how'd you get started? Well, you know, like most fingerboarders, you know, you got to have some kind of love for skateboarding. Uh, you know, I played the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater games as a kid, and you know had the Tech Decks and everything. But around 2009, I saw this YouTube video called Opus Zero. Uh, it was the mo- it just blew my mind. Like people were actually doing tricks with fingerboards, and there were you know, there was big companies. I found out about Black River and Flatface, and just all that just blew my mind. And ever since then, I've been you know fingerboarding, just learning and everything I can do. So you never really stopped. So you uh, pretty much been consistently, pretty much kind of in the scene for the entire time. Well, there was a brief period around like 2013, I stopped. Uh, and then around 2017, I went on a trip down to Gulf Shores, Alabama, of all things, and brought my fingerboards with me and just kind of fell in love with it again and found out that everything had moved from YouTube onto Instagram. That's a pretty big shift right there. I am it was kind of got like a 10 15 year like gap between when I started and then I got into it about you know freshman year of high school and kind of quit for good 10 15 years and so I at the time you know they were talking like 2001 when I pretty much kind of stopped doing it for a while and then there really wasn't much going on but if I would have known like you know by 2010 basically when you kind of got back into it or started it like things were just like growing like I'm kind of kicking myself for all of that like possibilities of time that I could have been doing it at for sure. Well, whenever I, you know, started like into it, like in 2009, that was like the big boom of it at first. And it's kind of like how we're having now with, you know, the whole tour and everything and all these other companies popping up left and right. Well, at the time, you know, you had all this innovation, you had decks getting wider. That's whenever the 30 to 34 millimeter decks were coming out, you know, at the time, 2011 the widest deck you would see is maybe like a 32 millimeter which is like a standard size now yeah it's definitely definitely standard 32 34 yeah when i came back off of covid i was dusting off 25.6 millimeter old tech decks and stuff and so like i mean that's uh that's original og status i guess you would say but yeah i'm kind of kicking myself for sure for basically kind of not getting back into it at least you know, check it in from time to time, I guess you'd say, because when I came back in from COVID, like I just, it blew my mind, like how crazy fingerboarding has gotten while I was gone. Yeah, I still have some old tech decks from 2010 where I took a heat gun and bent the the, the nose and the tail up, like to some insane heights, like so high that you could take your fingers, stick it on the nose and tail and just lift the board up. Yeah, I remember those days. We take lighters and then we like uh, pretty much melt the tail and the nose and we curl it like a like a French mustache, I guess you would say. Yeah, there's still some people that make decks that are kind of like that style. Hmm, interesting. You know anything off the anybody off the top of your head? Not that I can think of right now. Uh, I remember someone was talking about it um, on YouTube. I know CD Playa. Uh, Zero, if you've ever seen his YouTube videos, he's got some stuff like about that and the history of fingerboarding. That guy knows a lot. He's um, been in the scene for a long time. Yes, he has. I mean, he goes like 
he goes almost far back as I do, but yeah, he's been around the scene. He's been hanging out with Flatface and Mike Snyder. He's been touring a little bit with Black River, I think, in the past. I've been keeping up with his vids and stuff too. I mean, I want to say like people doing things on YouTube, you know, outside of like us. I mean, like CD Player Zero is definitely like the guy that's up and coming right now. So if you guys are not following him, like definitely gives his vids like a like a you know go peep him for sure because I mean his content is high quality stuff. So. Not too much quality content going out in the fingerboarding industry, but he's definitely one of those contributors for sure. Whenever I was uh, around 2009 to 2013, I was watching this YouTube channel called Fingerskate Selective. Frankie Fingerdex. Oh, uh, okay. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. I, yeah, he was uploading three or four times a week. That's what I've heard. Um, I don't even know if you could still actually search for his stuff or not. I don't know if he still has an open channel. His YouTube channel still exists. Um, actually, I play video games with him on occasion. Uh, very, like, well, I think last time I played with him was maybe a year or two ago, but he still gets on Xbox and stuff. It's pretty cool. Hmm. I haven't heard from him in a while. Um, we were playing GTA. GTA. I'm a COD fan, even though I it's it's uh it's gone downhill, but I'm still ride or dying it out. Right, add me yeah. on Xbox Ride King, by the way. Ride King. R I will. I D E K I N G. Yeah, his stuff was just, you know, every day, two, two Finger Tuesday, uh, Ask Frankie Friday, and then he would do reviews of stuff. Um, you know, he would review all the new Tech Deck stuff because at the time, Tech Deck was just dropping new ramps, new stuff. They were dropping wooden boards with, new trucks that had uh hot wheel style axles that rolled super smooth you know they they were trying to innovate at the time back in the day tech tech was supreme like i grew up with all of the plastic obstacles we actually had real metal rails and stuff like yes we had the bulls the del toro not the del toro the uh that pool. Demar pool. Yeah, the Demar pool. That's what I'm thinking of. Um, we had like the little stair sets, and we used to be able to like you could spend a fortune, but like we actually could build like plastic parks and stuff if you had it. And the Tony Hawk half pipe was definitely like supreme back in the day. Oh yeah, I have a I have two of those, but they recently China has access to the old injection molding. Ooh. So China has been putting those out for about the same price as they were. So for oh. like eighty bucks you can have like this massive wide half pipe that's huge. That's crazy. Which I think that's pretty awesome. Well, speaking of obstacles, so tell me about Snuggle Pup. What's going on with the name? How'd you choose it? Well, I chose the name because I have a dog that just likes to snuggle and she's a little snuggle pup and i was like well this is going to be the name i had a few other names but then they were kind of already taken people had already started stuff and i just didn't want to have any drama with it um you know i just it was originally going to be called butter ledges okay that was going to be thing because you know most of my stuff is it, you've never tried it but uh you will soon i will this uh, summer. everyone i've Everyone who's tried my ledges has been just blown away with how smooth the concrete is. I mean, the the molds, they're not like level ledges molds. You know, his stuff is like top tier. I mean, he's he's doing stuff that's insane. He's definitely leading the charge as far as creativity and high quality ledges for sure. Yeah. Um, he, he just gets good stuff. I mean, he knows how to make it right and everything. Uh, a lot of people, when they start making concrete ledges, they just take like a big back, like big bag of just regular mixed concrete and they pour it in and they pull it out the next day and it just comes out all crumbly and it's not smooth. And then all of a sudden you got all that sand piled up in the bottom of the mold. It Patience is key falls apart. for sure. A lot of us, you know, we want it like now, and most people don't realize like you definitely got to let that stuff sit and cure for sure. Yeah. Um, a lot of my ledges are they usually sit for about four or five days in the mold and they get watered. I don't know if you've ever heard about that. Mm -hmm. Um, so 
after about 24 hours, I just fill the mold, if, like fill the mold with water with like what's left in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it cures it a little bit better over time. Oh. Huh. Yeah, every single one of my ledges has been watered. Uh, that's the thing that if you get a new concrete driveway, they tell you water your driveway. It's a crazy thing. He's like, water the concrete, it cures stronger. Uh, it's best to pour a bunch of concrete before a big rainstorm. Interesting. Uh, this is stuff I've never, I mean, I've never been in the concrete like industry. So that's just, this is definitely news to me. I make some concrete obstacles and stuff like that as well. So this is interesting, uh, interesting technique. Yeah, I thought I would spill a little bit of the beans on the concrete industry, or at least some of it. I don't know how the guy at Level Edges does it. I'm pretty sure he just pours it. You know, silicone molds make it really easy. Silicone's the best. I am trying to work on finding molds. I'm making molds specifically, but for like concretes doing silicone, it's a it's kind of tricky. And like my molds that I'm trying to messing with, they're not like they're not very sturdy. I can probably make maybe like six or seven like things out of it before it's just like trash. And so I'm still trying to figure out like how to make a really solid like silicone mold. Yeah, a lot of my molds are pretty old, actually. I started Snuggle Puff around 2018. I was in high school still. Um, I didn't really have the time and place to really make it into a company. So I just put it on the back burner. And I decided to bring it back for this event and do a big in-person thing, kind of make it more personal. That's I don't awesome. know if I don't know if I'm gonna, you know, have big online stock drops and anything like that. It's more something like, hey, you know, you come out to this event, come meet me, hang out, uh, you know, get to buy a ledge for a fairly decent price. Um, all my ledges, the non-painted ones. I'm going to have them uh, like the 11 inch ones. I'm gonna, this is for the uh, YouTube video. So people that are listening, tune into the YouTube video to see what some of the ledges will look like. This one is a banked loaf that is 11 inches long. Uh, so for this those one that are be... listening, I've got Jacob here. He just pulled out a very yes. unique long concreted bank here so if you guys are not watching the youtube channel you guys definitely need to check this out yes it's trying to make the uh experience a little different because i know i've seen some of the other youtube videos and it's just everyone sitting around hanging out it's like give you a reason to come to the youtube video um i have one here that's painted my girlfriend's been doing some lovely graffiti 901 m town you know, we are from the Memphis, Tennessee area. Uh, if you are in that area, you should check out my Instagram page. Definitely. Um, this looks this looks fire. It's kind of got the worn look too, so I like it. Yeah, this ledge I haven't decided on pricing for the graffiti, but the eleven inch long ledges. They will be $12 at the event. Uh, And the six-inch loafs, I have this one right here for the people on the YouTube video. It's definitely a classic, classic six-inch loaf. Most uh, Yes. It's a pretty popular loaf. Definitely one of my favorites. Those six-inch loafs will be $8. That's a steal. So I'm just... That is, I want to have products that are affordable. I want everyone to just come get one, try it out. I want everyone to have something to skate on. I know that some companies, you know, the concrete's expensive, but then again, you know, they're making silicone molds and everything for them. And some of these companies, they'll 3D print an obstacle and then make a silicone mold of it. I've seen those. Those are pretty cool. There's a guy out in Canada. His name is Tyler with Basic Co. He's been 3D printing his molds and he's been doing absolutely stupid stuff as well. So it's interesting to see what you can guys can do with 3D printing. I kind of want to get one and kind of get into it. You should. Um, 
some of the stuff you can print, just print the mold itself mm -hmm. uh, with the material, like the softer filaments that you can use. Yeah, that rabbit hole goes way deep when you're talking 3D printing and what you can do with it. But there's a lot of prep you got to do to make it right, because otherwise you have all the 3D printed mold lines and stuff. Yeah, you Remember see those we're... a lot. No one sands those. They're hard to sand down, too. Oh, yeah. Whenever you um, make something with uh, a silicone, silicone captures every little detail. Like every little detail, every air bubble, every inconsistency, uh, every line, every scratch. It's going to be there. That's true. That is that is true. So let's uh let's talk about this Runeville collaboration that you guys got going on. Yes, me Tell and me Huber. about Runeville. What's what's going on with him? So I've known Huber for quite a while now. Uh, I bought a Black Friday deal from him like 2018. And uh, we've just kind of casually been, you know, talking ever since. Uh, he left the scene for a little while. He moved to Hawaii and he came back to San Diego where he lives now. And we've been talking ever since. I bought a deck from him, literally the first, like this deck. I'll show you right here for the YouTube video. I bought this Runa deck, this Runa Faker um i bought it from him first thing he when he came back i was one of the first customers and we've just been talking uh he's making concrete ledges now he uses this he uses very similar techniques that i use so uh go get a ledge from him i think he calls them the apollo oh yeah he makes really good decks um his nose and tail are a little bit more on the low medium side, right. but with slightly deeper concave. Um, I'm going to have 10 decks that he's sending out for me to sell at the event. Uh, they're going to be, you know, really cool looking. There's going to be some Runa Faker graphics. Uh there's going to be some more of his other graphics. He's got a lot of graphics. Yeah, I've been I'm actually his surprised stuff. to see. I'm excited to see what he sends me because he's keeping it a mystery. So whenever I get the decks, I'm going to start uploading pictures of each one onto my account so you can see what's going to be there. I'm soon going to have some more photos of the graffiti on the ledges. I just Good haven't fire. finalized everything for the photos. I yeah, should have photos. I should have photos up probably mid next week. Okay. Yeah, that's gonna be early. I like it. And once he finishes the decks, they're all gonna be posted on there. So everyone can see what's gonna be there and everything. And so for those that don't know, you're sharing a booth with him at the Atlanta stop on the tour, yes. correct? Yes, he sadly will not be able to be there. Uh Hope, I'm trying to see if I can maybe get him out there. I don't know, but right now, uh, he will not be there, sadly. Okay, so some of his stuff will be there. Yes, I'm basically acting like a distributor. For gotcha. Him. I was going to ask you about the whole like collaboration and the, and the booth sharing. So, yeah, so for you guys that don't know, we've got a nine-city international fingerboarding tour going down this summer. And Jacob here, Snuggle Pup, is going to be at the Atlanta stop on the tour. That's going to be July. I lied. I always mess this up. What's the tour say? June, June 4th. 4th. June 4th on the tour. So we got Atlanta, June 4th. Going down, we've got like six vendors there. So it's going to be a very packed, high-energy event for sure. So you guys haven't been peeping, definitely uh, check out our ticket sales online. Get your tickets early, especially if you want to compete. It's going to be a banger. It's going to be uh, it's going to be straight fire for sure. It's like the second stop on the tour. So we are we're stoked. Did you make it out to last year's, right? I did not. This will be my first big fingerboarding event. 
First one, right on. I don't want to ruin fingerboarding events for you, but they're uh, we've produced some pretty crazy high scale tournaments for sure. Yeah, initially, whenever I heard about it, um, I was going to try to compete into the competition, and I was like, I should bring Snuggle Pup back and bring some some quality stuff out for people to get. It's a good way to get some momentum if you're, you know trying to get things back up and on the, you know, on the road. So, I mean, like having this event, being a vendor, getting that, you know, those promo spots and kind of like giving you that nice little push that you need in the right direction for sure. And part of the reason why I did a collaboration with Huber, with Runaville, uh, was because I wanted to bring him some more spotlight to his company too. Uh, you know, share the love. I mean, if I'm going to be in an event and selling stuff, why not? To share definitely i think you mentioned that you were talking about possibly starting up some events in your area so let's talk about the area that you're at and what you what you're thinking about doing yes i live in the memphis tennessee area there's a skate park just south of memphis tennessee in hernando mississippi it's about 30 minutes south uh it's called pigeon park or hernando skate park uh it was founded by a man named edward pigeon he is sadly no longer with us. Um, he used to do a bunch of fundraising to get this park out. He'd be at every farmer's market in Hernando, just trying to get people to, you know, $20 here and there to get a new park. And then we got a big grant to get the park built. And it's probably one of the most fun flowing skate parks you can ride in the area. And they're actually right now building a street section. So right now, as we speak recording, they are pouring concrete for the skate park. Um, it's really cool. Uh, I used, um, sorry, once I'm trying to, <laughs> so they're pouring the concrete right now. And I've been in talk with the lady who now runs it instead of Edward. Uh, we're talking to the mayor about getting a fingerboard park built there. So I'm going to be funding and building a fingerboard park. That's part of the reason why I brought Snuggle Pup back to get some extra funds to build a park. That's pretty crazy. I like it. So, so we're talking about an outdoor fingerboarding spot that's pretty much just free and open to the public. Anybody can pretty much just pull up and kind of get a quick session on this thing. Yeah. That's the whole goal. And to also have events there. I mean, it's, it'd be small. We would have somewhere to fingerboard. Uh, you, know, you can go skate. They have events there all the time. I mean, the day that they open the new park, there's going to be about four or five bands playing. So hopefully I can, you know, get in good talks with the mayor and they let us build a park there. That sounds like a lot of fun. I know uh, there's a guy named Gary Graves who's, uh, I think it's called Cordial, Indiana. He's been, he got his city to build a skate park and they're building a fingerboard park up there as well. And so, I mean, what you're doing, just based off my experience with Gary, like, I mean, you're talking about some pretty intricate details as far as getting something like that, like off the ground and actually approved and actually being like, you know, worked on, which is crazy. Yeah, it would have to be official through the mayor and everything like that because that is a technically a public park. Mm -hmm. And to get all that done, you have to go through the politics of it and everything. Yeah, it's a lot of board meetings, town halls, stuff like that. That's what I've been told. So it's not impossible, but it's just uh, definitely a process. So the fact that you guys have made it this far on something like that is pretty crazy. Yeah, and also it really helps that you know the people from Pigeon Park are willing to you know, help with getting that process moved along because they love skateboarding and, you know, fingerboarding and skateboarding kind of go hand in hand and kind of have it as like a little central area and to, you know, fingerboard and skate. That's what I like about just, you know, the whole skateboarding culture and stuff like that as well. I mean, fingerboarding is pretty much kind of handcuffing themselves to skateboarding. So whatever skateboarding is kind of doing right now, like fingerboarding is pretty much traveling right along with it. So it's like, you know, you build a park, like an actual skateboard park now is getting to the point where like you can't build a skateboard park without actually building a fingerboard park as well. That's what I've been kind of noticing. 
I like to kind of put something on my website where like you can find all these like outdoor fingerboard parks. Be kind of cool, maybe like a map or something. That would be awesome because it is nearly impossible finding that stuff like on Google Maps or anything. Yeah, that's Uh, always been an issue with the fingerboarding industry as far as like open and readily available like information, you know, it's just it's kind of gatekept for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, I think uh, people are worried about people coming in and destroying it. And, you know, there there is a side of skateboarding that or some skaters that don't like fingerboarding. I don't really consider them to be true skaters because technically fingerboarding is still skating. I mean, it's just a different form. Yeah, there's definitely uh, a few of those that are on the great divide between fingerboarding isn't as cool as skateboarding. But for the most part, I think like everybody's pretty much down with fingerboarding. I've not met anyone that actually skates, that knows how to skate, that, you know, was like, oh, fingerboarding is not cool. But now whenever I was young, that was a different story. Yeah, it was definitely I my parents, if you guys have ever like listened to any other podcast or any stories on my background, like my parents didn't let me skateboard. And so I am probably one of the few fingerboarders that have never skated. And so like for me, like, you know, all the real skateboarders were like out there, like, you know, breaking elbows and getting teeth knocked out and scraping knees and all kinds of cool stuff. And, you know, and here I am like, you know, kitchen table in it. So it's definitely uh Definitely levels to it for sure. All right. You can still get some splinters from some of these wooden, some wooden parks that are more homemade. Yeah, there's definitely some injuries. I've gotten uh, splinters on uh, outdoor banisters and stuff like that. So, I mean, you can get injured. You can get, you can get injured. It's not to the same level, but <laughs> I don't no, know. If, sure. you, if you get a splinter and don't take care of it, it can get pretty bad. <laughs> no, definitely. Definitely. Definitely take care of those splinters, guys. <laughs> oh man that's funny so we are man so we're like 30 days out from atlanta we're by the time this comes out we're like two weeks out from chicago so we are basically getting ready to be like knee deep in the summer tour this summer so i am excited it's like fingerboarding summer camp for me i get to travel the country meet all kinds of cool people people like you We've got Chicago happening May 28th, and we've got Atlanta happening June 4th. And so we're off to the charge. Definitely check out the schedule. Definitely pick up some tickets. I am excited. I'm excited to have a front row seat to the best fingerboarding in the country. I'm excited for I'm you also, to have your first event. Yes. I'm, since you mentioned I'm sponsoring Atlanta and also the event in Dre Cut, so there will be some of my ledges there for the raffle and Drake up. So how can uh, I forget if you're not able my to make it to the one in Atlanta? Yeah. If you don't make it to the one in Atlanta, if you're closer to the event in Drake Hut, which you know, that's going to be where the flat face uh, building is, you know, Mike Schneider and all them. Yeah. Mike uh, Schneider and company. We got the flat face building. We're taking over. We're actually hosting competitions at Mike Snyder's spot, which is, I don't actually know if it's ever been done or not. We'll have to get with him, but it's going to be magical for sure. We've got all of his parks mixing in with all of our parks. And so we're talking about like possibly a boss 2.0. Yeah. Mike has done a lot for the uh, fingerboarding scene. No, he's, he's, what some people consider the Tony Hawk of fingerboarding. He's been doing it for a very long time at a very high level. I would consider him to be like the LeBron of fingerboarding, basically. Like he's putting on mm. 20 solid straight years at a high level. I don't think anybody can pretty much kind of argue that for sure. So shout out to Mike. Yeah. yeah shout out to Mike, Mike Snyder legendary guy hope so to meet him someday you gotta wait i mean you can always uh follow us back because you know since we leave atlanta we're pretty much heading out to dre cut so we got spot in the truck you can always ride along <laughs> i don't think i'll be able to get the time off from work to prove sadly no i understand that for sure i'm already kind of tiptoeing with my job as well this summer so we'll see we'll see you got any shout outs yeah. that you want to give out? 
Um, I do have a couple people I want to mention. Uh, there's this guy, I don't know if you've heard of him, No Comply Fingerboards, Todd Kudzort. You know, he he's an OG. He started coming back to the fingerboard scene after he shut down No Comply at the uh, Pop Factory. That was his physical location where he hosted events and stuff in the 2010 era of fingerboarding. Uh He's bringing back his wheels, his iconic wheels. Um, he had these wheels called lab wheels, no comply lab wheels back in uh, the 2010 time frame. Um, he's bringing them back. He's got some new wheels that he just dropped recently called no co halos. Mm. Those things are buttery smooth wheels. Um, definitely check out. Uh, no comply fingerboards uh, also uh, I have one of my friends over in the UK Jamie at Whoosh fingerboards um, I know I'm doing a thing with Runaville but I still you know I ride multiple decks I'm a fingerboarder first before I'm a businessman and I will say Jamie makes some top tier decks too he recently reached six years of his company and I'm really happy to see it uh, I've been, I've got a, I've had whoosh decks for the past five years. I have like six or seven of them. Uh, I have quite a few Runaville decks too. Um, I think I have like four or five Runaville decks. Um, I mean, just no comply, whoosh, Runaville, go check them out. Um, who else do I want to mention? And Todd uh, is a good dude. He's actually local to me. I'm not exactly sure how far out from Indianapolis he is, but he came by, gave me a visit when we still had our shop last year. And so I got to actually meet him in person, which was pretty, pretty big honor. Yeah, I was talking to him about it. Um, he mentioned that he talked to you. Um, you should have him on here. See if he wants to. Uh, yeah, definitely. I'm going to have to add him to the list. I mean, you got to remember Todd's an OG. When you think about if you know companies that it, existed in that time frame of the 2010 time frame you know no comply was one of the big ones it was yeah you, know, you had you had black river flat face no comply you know berlin wood i mean those were the big companies at that time yeah they were definitely uh i mean it was definitely the wild wild west back then it was uh some pretty big companies kind of leading the charge and then there was like just not a lot of documentation on it. And so when you're trying to do like your research and kind of look back and see how the early days and stuff like that was, it's pretty undocumented, but anybody who's been around for that, they'll tell you like, this is the key people that were kind of doing things. Well, you know, I'm bringing back uh finger skate selective. Uh, you know, he reviewed a bunch of decks and stuff from different companies. Um, you know, he used to ride a lot of decks from Affliction Fingerboards. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. I uh, vaguely running like a, a vaguely kind of catching that as a memory. So Affliction Fingerboards, you know, he was making wooden obstacles at the time. They were on quality with Black River, uh, birch plywood. Uh, I mean, some of the stuff he was making was nothing like what Black River was doing. I still have my old affliction uh, ramp that I had, it was this kind of like this pyramid with a, a wall on the back of it. And that was like my first big fingerboarding obstacle. Uh, and that thing was awesome. I wish Phil would come back. Like, you know, Todd came back and I wish Phil would, cause he made some really cool decks. Um, actually, I, I kind of ask uh, if anyone has an old school K deck from Affliction Fingerboards, um, I will snag that thing from you. <laughs> you heard it here. If you got one, sounds like Jacob's going to throw out uh, some trades or some cash. Yeah, because that um, I know some people would have them. Um, some of the bigger fingerboarders that have been on YouTube still have them. Um, yeah, but there was a lot of companies at that time. A lot of people were making decks. Uh, it's just crazy. There's uh, some collections out there for sure. Some people with some crazy 10, 15-year-old decks, like from just past companies. Some 
existing some knots i know a guy i can't remember his handle otherwise i should do a shot out but he's got like some wrinkler wheels like still brand new in the package along with like all kinds of just crazy hmm. vintage decks yeah and i'm like so yeah cool. um i can't remember uh her name but i know she owns freestyle fingerboards she has a insane collection of vintage fingerboards from that time frame uh like an insane collection just stacks and stacks and stacks of decks and you got a box just full of old flat face and black river boards i mean she's sitting on a gold mine oh i bet there's a a guy his name is markov uh his last name's not coming to me even if it did it's it's hard to pronounce but he's out of the minneapolis area and he has the largest fingerboarding collection guinness book of world records i'll definitely put his handle in the description for you guys but he has a compound but he's got like you know a room in his house that's pretty much kind of like a bonus room this thing is probably I want to say it's it's massive, like a thousand square feet, and it is literally nothing but fingerboarding obstacles and boards and decks and handboards, all original, all in the packaging, never used, just boxes stacked on top of boxes. I think he said he had something like 30,000 units or something like that. I don't know the exact number, so forgive me Ooh. if I'm speaking uh, not real facts, but it is definitely, it's it is like insane just to be in that room and just flipping through things and just seeing what he's got. It's nuts. Yeah, that's how Todd is too. He has a bunch of old, like he has some stuff from tech deck, even some originals, like unreleased press model stuff of like those original 32 millimeter longboard trucks. I don't know if those. you know about those, Yeah, but the independent base plates, uh, he has a bunch of old school stuff. Um, who else? Am I thinking? Oh, I was going to mention Laughing Skull Dimensions on Instagram. Uh, he used to make these wheels called Acid Drops. Those things were amazing. Um, they were insanely grippy. If you like grippy urethane fingerboard wheels, they were uh, made from skateboard wheels. I know who you're talking about. He also does a lot of skateboarding stuff too, if I'm not mistaken. His I, channel is pretty diverse. Yeah, he he does a lot of stuff about BMX. He likes yeah. to ride bikes. Um, I was also I'm I'm kind of going back and forth between topics. Hopefully, people can follow along. Uh, Todd makes finger roller skates. I've seen those. Um, I think you brought up the Revos. Pair. I don't know where I've seen them, but I've seen them. I don't know if he brought them into the shop or someone got them from him or his site or whatever and brought them in, but those things are pretty cool. And they're heavy duty he, too. Like they're pretty legit. Yeah. He just started making those again. Uh, new designs, everything. Uh, some of the stuff's been redesigned. I mean, they have dual bearing wheels. I remember the hype around dual bearing wheels back in the day too. Sadly, fingerboarding, I don't think it's made for dual bearing wheels. I missed out on the whole kind of launch of that, just being kind of absent, but coming back and seeing those, the wheels are heavy too, so it definitely weighs down your deck when you're dealing with the dual bearings. I know uh, cartwheels, they originally started with dual bearing wheels. I know Yellowwood, they have dual bearing wheels. Um, Mike at Flatface, uh, he was doing it for a little while. I don't know if he's still doing have, it or not. Eh, he probably still has them listed on the website. Just sold out. Mm, gotcha. I'll have, to, I'll have to hit him up. Yeah, if you want to have a real blast from the past with fingerboarding, some of the bigger fingerboarding websites, go to the Wayback Machine and check it out. You can see some of the stuff from the old days. Oh, huh. yeah, I'll definitely have to check that out. Uh, there was some stuff that was, I think, I can't remember. I think he had deck molds on flat face at one point in time, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure. We'll have to we'll have to get Mike on the get Mike on the line and figure out uh some of this yeah, old you, uh, history that's been going down. Mike knows all about that. I'm sure. Definitely, that's definitely going to be an exciting episode for sure when that goes down. 
Yeah, right, I have a mic on anywhere. Oh, no, you're good. Yeah, having Mike on a podcast would be cool. I feel like he's probably like the most interviewed person in fingerboarding. And so like as much as I want to have Mike on the podcast, I'm almost like afraid to just be like, oh, it's so generic to have Mike on the podcast. So we get Mike on the podcast. It'll definitely be uh it'll definitely be a spin. It'll definitely be an interview. I wouldn't even say an interview, it's more like just you know, two dudes having a conversation, but it'll definitely be a conversation that has never been recorded before. You got to find the right questions to ask him. It's all about the you right gotta, questions. You got to do a Nardwar level research on Mike. Well, it's just a matter of just drawing out all of this vintage information, all of this like early days stuff. He's got like such a huge just wealth of knowledge that like he could do a podcast and absolutely kill it. Just just him rambling about like the old days. I mean, I'd listen to that. Yeah, that's there's a lot of these really cool companies that are trying to come back, and now everyone's heard of them. There's a lot of hype in fingerboarding. There's a lot too of hype, much hype in fingerboarding. There's a lot of hype companies. There's uh some of them live up to their names. Some of them are kind of like I don't know. I don't I don't see what you guys see. And then uh, there's some companies that you know they're not even categorized as like being a fingerboard company. They're more categorized as like art. So yeah, let's throw, I'll throw out a name. So uh, if you guys want to like, you know, give me some hate, definitely hate me in the comments, but uh, like Woob, for instance, Woob is definitely a huge hype company, but like a lot of people, I feel like either you like them as like, they're to me, they're art. I don't see them as like fingerboarding. Like, yes, it is a fingerboard, but like, you know, everything is hand painted and stuff like that. So to me, you're buying a piece of art. You're not really buying a fingerboard. And so for the cost, for the price, for what they do and what they are, they're hyped up way high if you're a fingerboarder. But if you're looking at it as art, it's like, you know, it makes sense. And so Depending on, you know, there's just a lot of other companies and stuff like that that I can definitely go on and on and on about, but there's a lot of hype companies for sure. There, There is one company that his decks are like art, but also extremely functional. Collinswood. Yes. You ever heard of him? Yes. I have a Collinswood Lava Lamp deck. That thing is gorgeous. I might have to get him to make me one with a regular popsicle shape because this, this one's wire. got more of a it's more of a wakeboard style shape and it's depending on the shape of the deck, it may be more functional than others, but um, his stuff is just gorgeous. You know, he wood burns and paints and everything. He's, he's from Alabama, I believe. I'm not sure where he's from. I I think he's from Alabama because I was talking to him. I mentioned the event and hopefully he comes out. It'd be That'd pretty be cool. cool. I'd love there. to meet him. Also, I like to mention uh, Savannah Sitting Duck One Four Four. I think that's what it is. Uh, I think it's Four Twenty Two, maybe Four Twenty Two. I think so. Yeah, she was someone from the uh, early days of fingerboarding. Uh, she had a big channel at the time. Um, she makes really good polycarbonate decks. My girlfriend has one. That thing feels amazing. It has really good pop. It's definitely not a tech deck. That's for yeah, sure. Her stuff is fire. I've actually had the opportunity to meet her a couple times. I met her at the Elaine event last year. I'm going to assume that she's going to be at the Elaine event this year. So if you're going, you'll definitely get to meet her, not throwing any pressure on her or anything that I've announced her arrival. But I met her twice at rendezvous and stuff as well. She's a cool person. She's always got a, a happy go lucky smile she's super just just chill laid back always got the camera always filming like just love just love her as a person yeah i remember when uh i remember her making videos all the time i used to watch her videos um glad she started a company cuz i mean that that clear crystal grip tape she makes is just it's good it's a little uh, sticky for Jeff, me but yes. it's good it's good i just get a little dirty it works pretty well that on a mellow board too good yeah nice. if you have more of a mellow board it's perfect or if you have any of those weird uh like 
shorter decks. I know um, Stay Tuned Fingerboards. Uh, I don't know if he makes decks anymore. I haven't really heard much about it. Uh, he made these like 50 millimeter boards, oh, 60 millimeter. Yeah. Goo makes they, they uh, weren't, one. I know they weren't else wide, they were short. Yeah, they're like yeah, little they stubby were, boards. Uh, yeah, I have a couple of those. Those are really fun to just pop out and have a little sesh with. It's weird how functional they are for being so small. I prefer kind of shorter wheelbase decks. I like a shorter wheelbase. I'm a 34 35 by 96 like i can't really go longer than a 96 that's kind of my thing definitely hmm. any last shout outs um no one that i can really think of uh you know i will mention scott at dynamic i haven't really had the pleasure of talking to him With Joy Colt buying Joy Colt, I'm quite excited to see what he's going to do. That's uh, some of the craziest news of 2023, to be honest with you. When I heard about that, I was like, there's no way. Then he confirmed it, and I was like, what? So it'll be interesting to see what he does with the company, the brand, all the recipes for you know wheel designs and materials and stuff like that. And so I'm not sure if he's going to mix and match it with his own brand, some dynamic you know, Joy Colt collapse stuff like that you can go like a many different directions so it'd be exciting to see like what he does in the future with that for sure i will say that joy cult urethane was really good urethane like it just feels great it's like a perfect happy medium in my opinion i i have a lot of joy cult wheels um i have a whole lot of those um like 20 something sets of them that's crazy yeah, we've had some people in the shop that have had them, so I've got to experience them myself. I actually, I like them. I got on, you know, back in the fingerboarding in the later part of his career, and his career kind of went downhill a little bit, and so long wait time, stuff like that. So I never really got a chance to go out and actually purchase and own my own set, and so I'm excited to, you know, hopefully Scott with Dynamics can take it over and I can get back on board. Yeah, I mean, when I tell you that urethane was good, it was good. Um you know, I never really had any problems with it. Uh, I know a lot of people did. I've never had any problems with. Joy if you got it early, up, like, like you know, you had great experiences. But if you got on, on like the last two years of his, like you know, him owning it as a company, it was pretty rough patch there. Yeah, after twenty twenty, it was kind of sketchy. Yeah. Um, I, I I remember he was doing some cool stuff though, like a year five, like a gold ring. Uh, you know, he had merchandise like shirts and stuff. Um, and that's really cool. If you got a fingerboard company, you also got you know merch and stuff. You can like buy hats, shirts, all that. That's pretty cool to see. I know Slush Colt does that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I got to meet with him at Rendezvous and chit chat with him a little bit and stuff as well. He's uh he's an interesting dude. I I like him. He's uh he's kind of pioneering like fingerboard retail i mean he is in like 50 60 70 zoomies i don't know the exact count but i mean he's got he's literally like all across the nation like in zoomies he's got like his own oh he has it all that. yeah you can go to zoomies if you have to go on like his site there's like 50 60 locations that he's in but you can actually get some slush colt gear and fingerboards and stuff through him at zoomies and so i did I mean, not know that yeah so for fingerboarding i mean you're talking you're talking about like physical retail, like, you know, it's usually just Hot Wheels, Tech Tech, stuff like that, and Walmart, Target, blah, blah, blah. But like an actual fingerboarding brand, like being in retail is huge. And that's one of the things like, you know, no one's even talking about. It's like the fact that like he's paved that way for fingerboarders to theoretically get on a mass scale like that and reach into retail. So that's that's impressive. So big shout out to Slush Colt for sure. Oh, and I will mention uh, a local sax tape. I like He's from him. Memphis, Tennessee. Um, I've not had the pleasure of meeting him, uh, but he is a local to the Memphis area, so thought I'd mention him. Yeah, he's and a cool hopefully, dude. He came out to the Atlanta event. Yes. Uh, I did get some of his grip at one point. There was a local indoor skate shop called Society Memphis, 
Uh, he had some, they actually had like fingerboard stuff in their shop whenever they had a shop there that wasn't owned by the skate shop. I mean, the skate part. So now they don't have the fingerboard stuff, sadly. Like they used to have Black River trucks and flat face wheels and all that stuff. It was pretty cool. Uh, this was like 20, uh, 2019, 2020 era. Right before COVID and everything. Yeah, back in the day. Seems like not that long ago. But that's almost five years ago. Yeah, almost. I mean, it is 2023. So. I know, that's crazy. Well, right on, Jacob. I want to thank you for coming on to the show. Tell people where they can find you. Can they find you on Instagram? They can find you. Yeah, they can find me on Instagram. I have my fingerboard. Uh, account i have two accounts for fingerboarding i have snuggle pup fb which is snuggle pup well snuggle yeah snuggle under underscore pup f underscore fb and then i have my main instagram for fingerboarding uh mtrx underscore tactical underscore fb uh that is my just where i post regular fingerboarding content uh, I kind of do little reviews on decks and I make posts about things and you know, I like to take really pretty pictures of all my setups and things. Uh, I just talk about fingerboarding in general on there. I share people's clips and things like that too. Um, I've been doing that with uh, the snuggle pup account, sharing clips, just tricks that blow my mind. That's but the matrix, the MTRX tactical is where I have my, you know, just normal fingerboard content. So if you okay. want to just talk about fingerboarding, hit me up. If you want to talk about sn Snuggle Pup and the event, you know, hit me up there. I like to keep them separated so I can be a businessman and be just a consumer too at the same time. Yeah, definitely. So two accounts, so basically a professional account and a personal account. So definitely hit him up. We'll have his links in the descriptions, both on the audio and on the YouTube channel as well. And so once again, man, thanks for coming on the podcast. It's been a absolute pleasure. Thank you. Um, I'm glad to be part of fingerboarding history. I'll put my little stamp on things. Right on. Till next time, guys.